Ladies, we are going to be talking now about some different things that you can do to actually cultivate this femininity. Because we talked about, you know, issues that we have and all, you know, that you have and all that type of thing. So now it's like, well, what do we do now? How do we become more feminine? How do we cultivate that? Especially if you're more in your masculine. So I'm going to give you guys some things here on this list that you guys, you can start literally today. And it's going to really help you to bring that femininity out. So number one I've got here is connect to your creativity. Now creativity can be very feminine energy. So it's talked about getting into something that will bring that out of you. So whether that's dancing, uh, it could be painting, it could be drawing, it could be writing, it could be cooking, it could be sewing. It, the, the list goes on. It's all about different arts, you know, things that can bring that out. So one thing that you got, you ladies can start doing, uh, uh, I know a lot of times you might be busy or might have a lot of things going on, but this is something you have to take time out for. It can really do something for you internally. And you'll pro and if you've never tried these things before, maybe that could be the, one of the little missing components of your life. Uh, getting into something like i mean i'm you know a lot of women say they, they're not very good at painting or drawing or any of that type of stuff but i i know a lot of women that did you know never did any of this type of stuff and then started getting into dance and it could be any type of dance some some women like to do pole dancing some women like to do uh swing dancing some women like to do you know like salsa or tango you know these different and and they it actually if you see some of these women when they're doing these dances they're very, they're in tune to it. They're very flowy. Their bodies are moving. They are, they're twisting their hips, you know, they're flowing their hair around, you know, uh, it's, it's a really interesting thing. And a lot of times they don't even realize that that's, that's inside of you. You don't even, if you never tried it before, you know, this could be something that you can, you can incorporate and in, it doesn't have to be dancing. Like I said, it could be any of the different types of arts, but a lot of women actually say, Getting into this, these types of things can actually help you to cultivate that feminine energy and it actually comes out and flows and it feels amazing to them. I love that. And let's let's take a little deeper cut at why uh, creativity is associated with the feminine and why that's associated with women. And the, the nature of the, the hormonal balance in a woman is more sensitive to neuroticism. It's more sensitive to um, things being off in the environment or even things being right. As you move throughout the day as a woman, you're going to experience things um, based on the emotional and hormonal landscape that you that you experience. What that does is it provides contrast. Yeah. You could be walking through a field and experience beauty and transcendence, or you could experience the field as hating and rising up to devour you. And both of those things create color. And it's really the nature of creativity to provide this contrast and this depth. So somebody could, a man could paint a field and a man looks at a field and goes, field. He labels it a field, it's a field, that's all there is to it. Field, produce wheat, produce food, done. It's done. But when a woman enters a field, because of her, her emotional and hormonal makeup, she's going to experience these the, experience these nuances of the field. She's going to maybe personify the field and the wind and the rain, how it feels against her skin. And if it supports her emotional well-being or if it's attacking her and it feels uncomfortable. So all of these things really reflect a depth that the feminine is very skilled at and women are skilled at because of their emotional makeup. Yes, yes. This can go for men. If you guys have a woman that's kind of in your in her masculine energy, these these are some things that you can actually do with her. Maybe dancing. I, I so one thing I did uh, with a girl I used to date was uh, went to a sip and paint, and when I tell you, she just loved that. She just sat back and she just you know she's playing with their you know with her canvas and just able to just express herself. And that was like one of the highlights. And you know, it's it, creativity. It's it's something that it, it allows flow because it's creativity is like you're. It's it's something from nothing, but it's just, it's flow, and that's literally what feminine energy is. It's very flowy. It's very it's very creative. It's very just nurturing, 
And that's something that you can do if you guys are, are experiencing uh, issues when in your relationship. That's these are just some ideas that you can do with your woman and and, uh, and ladies, you don't have a man and you just you want to find ways to express yourself in that way. These are this is a really great way. And one other thing I, I got here is in order to to get into your femininity, that's one way. Another another way is to make sure that you're nurturing yourself. And it's really interesting that some women get so caught up in life. They get so caught up in especially, you know, you see, oh, boss ladies you got to make sure you're taking time to nurture your soul to nurture yourself to, sh to love yourself self-care if you've had a long week and you're gonna have to do some more work over the weekend that type of thing make sure you're taking some time out maybe go to the spa uh, run yourself a bubble bath make sure you're taking care of yourself you can get your hair done you can get pampered a massage just find ways that you different things that you can do in order to make sure you're taking care of yourself because the thing is when you're so caught up in work and life and your kids and everybody else but you, you, you leave yourself out and it could really leave you feeling drained, depleted, or in your masculine because it makes it might make you feel like you need to be doing something else to make yourself feel better. But really, you need to be tending to your feminine energy. It wants to come out. It wants to play. It wants to feel nurtured. It wants to just be able to bask. And so make sure that you're incorporating self-care and nurturing into, and it could be, it, you might not even find nurturing in those types of things. That's just an example. But some some women find it, they love to go into nature. That's their nur nurturing self-care or go to the beach and just sit there and listen to the ocean waves. It, it, it can be any different types of thing, but whatever soothes your soul and brings you, you know, makes you feel nurtured and makes you feel like you're, you're loved by yourself. I encourage you to do that because it's really gonna, I mean, it's going to bring that out and it's going to it's going to soften you because you don't want to get to the point to where you're just doing so much in life. And you just don't have no time to sit down. You don't have any time to relax and you don't want to just be resting in that masculine energy. So just uh, that's just uh, one of the things I have here is being able to nurture yourself. Hmm. Men are being lied to about self-care. This is this is very interesting. Everything that you said is completely applicable to women. However, when we talk about what men need in order to nourish themselves, we need to work and we need to complete the job that we've done in re regular intervals. That is the best self-care that a man can do. I don't know about you, but every time I take a bath, I think it's dumb. Every time I get a massage, I always expect it to be better. Every time I take care of myself in one of these like flower petals on the bed type of ways, I'm just like, what goddamn waste of time. <laughs> Masculine self-care is cleaning up your integrity, accomplishing work, and, and getting things done so that you can validate yourself that you're actually a contribution in the world. And and maybe there's a little bit of, of like, ooh, cranking the, the heat up on the shower a little bit in the morning. I'm not gonna say like live an aesthetic life, but by and large, the masculine principle is validated and cares for himself when he cleans up his integrity and performs work and gets it done. I agree there. I feel a lot of times I think a lot of anxiety and stress and things like that that men deal with is you hey, You need to. There's some stuff that you're, you've been neglecting. There's some stuff that you really need to get done. And you've been putting it on the back burner and it's in the back of your mind and you really can't chill because it's there and it's it's eating at you and it's something that you know you need to be doing so for men it's really just taking care of your shit like <laughs> you don't let it pile up to the point to where you're like oh i'm so overwhelmed and i'm so pissed oh i don't know what to do you know get it done in intervals like you said make sure that you can take that time out to you know if you have to knock it out in blocks whatever you have to do get your stuff done get it taken care of and you know, if there's time for a bubble bath later. <laughs> <laughs> Just the bottom line of this is that like, as I've done, as I've like dove into the research, the, the hormonal differences cause our bodies and brains to just, they, we value different things, we approach different things in different ways. 
If you're getting advice that's not suited to your hormonal sack as a man or your hormonal sack as a woman and, and the values and the behaviors and the assumptions and the emotions that flow from those things, you're getting bad advice. Exactly. Oh, you know, like that. <laughs> Oh, go go ahead. I, I, that that literally it just no, it no. really just brought me to the next point. It like what you just said that literally just uh, sometimes, especially with women. I mean, it happens with guys too. But sometimes with women, you get really bad advice. You have really bad role models. You might have really bad friends that just really have not the slightest idea of what it is to be a woman. And so one other thing that i have here on this list that women can do to become more feminine and cultivate that uh, femininity is to connect yourself with strong female role models that are feminine i see this happen way too many times a woman that is pretty feminine she's pretty much in her feminine but might not always know the things to do in order to stay there or to get deeper in that they might go to a friend or a colleague or somebody for advice and they'll give them advice and it's usually i'll say at least 80 90 percent of the time terrible advice they're they're telling them things <laughs> that's gonna put them more in their masculine which you know oh i my man did this and i don't know how to you know respond to it i don't know what i should do girl if i were you i would do this this and this and, and she's like oh you know what i'm gonna go do that and then it polarizes him and then now you guys got a more a, a deeper problem all because you listen to someone that has no and the women that you're listening to half the time they've never had a husband or they may might be on their 10th husband and you know <laughs> you know they, they have no idea how to what it is to be a feminine woman they have no feminine traits they might dress like it but they have no feminine traits on the internal and you're getting advice from them and it's just it's just it, it's all bad so when you're trying to become a more feminine woman and cultivate that femininity make sure that you're surrounding yourself with women that or at least one woman that you can go to uh, a lot of women say they they kind of uh, found like a, a mentor or some a woman that's maybe 10 to 20 years older than you that has already been there who has a successful marriage or has had one or you know knows knows her a thing or two about being a feminine woman that that is the type of person or type of people that you need to be around and get advice from and really pay attention like pay attention to these people's lives like what type of lives are they living that you need to be getting advice from them you know <laughs> some women that you are going to talk to are just they're going to have terrible advice they're, they just they have not not not, sli not the slightest idea and they're really leading you down a road of more masculinity and more destruction this can go for men too because men can get bad advice from other guys as well um, when it comes to dating relationships and life in general same thing applies for men but we're, we're, we're talking about women make sure that you're able to surround yourself with one or more of women that have integrity who have feminine qualities who know how to what it is to be a woman who knows what it is to be feminine Perfect. Yeah, you got to surround yourself with good people, man. <laughs> Definitely. Another thing uh, I've got here. This is this one is uh, pretty interesting. It says, "Oh, well, I guess this kind of goes half and half and half with it." Reject misconceptions of femininity, and so this one is going to go along the line. I can really connect this with that same one with people. If you're around the wrong type of people, you you might have women that being a feminine woman is a terrible thing. There's women that feel that being feminine is weak and they feel that being a submissive woman is weak and just a terrible thing. It's like just not what a woman is or not what a woman should do. And if you are submissive, uh, submitting to a man, then you just, you're, you, I don't even know what you're doing with your life. And it's, it's insane, but you got to look at everything. You got to look at all the aspects of these different women that are giving you this advice what is it about femininity that is a bad thing what is it about being submissive what, what what's wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that the, the thing is the women that are saying there's something wrong with it may have had issues with a man or or multiple men in the past which could most likely be something to do with them but they're giving you that advice from the lens of, that they see they're giving that advice from the lens of the negative experiences that they've had and so when it comes to femininity, 
and getting advice and all these different types of things you got to learn you got to learn what femininity is to you but what that actually entails because some some other woman's view of femininity can totally not align with what you are viewing as femininity or what what it means for you to express it it could be a, an entirely different ball game so uh rejecting misconceptions of it, not letting other people and other women tell you you know you might be doing something wrong uh if if it's working for you it might be working for you sometimes but some women they like i said they've had negative experiences and so it makes them put those experiences those project those onto you say oh no if you're submitting to a man you're losing right now oh if you're letting a man do this for you then you're losing oh if you're doing this and you're losing oh yeah you should be you don't you don't have to uh, you don't have to wear that oh you don't have to do this oh you don't have to let a man you know whatever you don't have to go out on a date and, and oh yeah you should be making him do this this and this and it you know you don't want to get a misconception of what femininity actually is but so I, I one of my pieces of advice would be for the ladies watching is to really define what femininity is for you what it means to, to you how do you express it how do you feel about it how does it make you feel when you embody your femininity these are different things that you should which i guess couldn't go under self-reflection but figuring out what that is to you and knowing yourself as a woman is going to help you to reject the misconceptions that you will hear you're going to hear them you're going to hear all types of misconceptions from all different walks of life but you have to know what it is for yourself i'm going to get into some esoteric math just for a second let's do it <clears throat> let's say that you're a human being right let's just say <laughs> let's say for a second you're not an alien <laughs> or a dolphin just pretend it's a crazy imagination <laughs> And you have the you have uh, both the ability to act in a penetrative way, and then also act in a receptive way. And let's say you split your time 50-50 between going out in the world and being active, and then coming home and being receptive. When you do that, you do that in accordance with the kind of life you want or the kind of life you expect. And that 50% active and that 50% passive equals 100%. You're splitting your time into those two things. Now consider that against this idea that in a partnership, one person can 100% embody a receptive and feminine energy, and one person can 100% embody a penetrative um, masculine energy. In, in that ability to completely embody both, there's no loss of energy. There's very little loss of energy. And, and there, you have two people who are aligned toward the same vision, ideally, right? There's a, there's a vision. They're both working toward that vision to, to create the life that they want. The two have become one flesh. Now, I'm using that as a Bible reference. There's, here's another Bible reference. Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Wherever two agree on earth, so shall it be done in heaven. So while you're over here 50% 50, 50 penetrating with your time, 50% receiving with your time, they're over here binding things in heaven, calling fruits to come into their life, and and actually not being 200 percent but probably being more like 300 percent the sum of the parts is greater than each individual part whereas a single person who's dividing themselves 50 50 is always going to be switching back there's going to be this loss of energy it's an inefficient system but if you can train yourself to trust your partner as a woman to trust his leadership if you can train yourself as a man to provide even though you may not see the fruits of it directly then you can have a system that operates at 300 percent efficiency whereas a single person who's trying to switch back will lose energy they won't have that agreement in that intimate partnership and they won't have the same kind of results and this is why this is what we call couple privilege this is what we what we look at the economic numbers of how couples are able to produce more than single people there's a lot of reasons i'm not going to say correlation equals causation but you have to look at it and say something's up here couples are making much much more money than their single counterparts. Why is that? Well, I propose that it might be because they're able to manifest in a way that works, whereas a single person is not able to manifest as efficiently. I love that. 
and we talked about this a little bit in probably two or three episodes ago but there's there's a, a thing that happens when a man and a woman are working like i said working together in perfect harmony she's able to just be in her feminine he's able to just be in his masculine and you guys are working together it, that's a power couple that's a true power couple and when a woman and a man can really get together like that like really work together like that you know people see people see all types of different relationships in the world and they see things not work and it's i i believe it's because of this 50 50 thing being able to trust a, a, you know a woman to just be in her feminine and you're doing what you're supposed to be as a man uh and, and she's trusting you to be in your masculine that is the way that the union is when you come in together that way you're one you're literally one and so imagine that two powers coming together in complete harmony and then going out into the world and, and just just re reaping the benefits of that you know there's that's a priceless union you really can't beat that union and just just like what you said you know it's like working at 300 percent you know a single person you can you can get stuff done absolutely but like you said it's you're you're having to do both things and from one person so you know you can only do so much you really can only do so much but i mean i've seen people get together and it's it's interesting i uh i, I watch a lot of different podcasts and uh, there's this one guy his name is alex hermosi i think his name is and he talked about what he was doing you know all this this business stuff that he was trying to do and he he it was working like he had all these gyms and he had he, he, he was making money but he wasn't making money at the same time because he was just it was just so much he had to do and he met this woman and you know he originally he just wanted her to be like a business partner but eventually they start dating and actually uh seen how you know how she uh increased his business pr productivity by like a thousand percent it was ridiculous her, one simple thing that she said he couldn't see it he had he owned nine gyms but made no money like it was crazy All, everything was just going back into the business and so she was like what if you only had one business that worked better than all nine of your businesses and he's like huh i never thought about that and <laughs> and and he's a million he's a multi-millionaire she stuck by him through all the building process all you know the the ups and downs like he, he literally came up to her and said hey if you want to leave i i get it i understand like i this is you know i i tried and and she knows she stuck by him and he is a multi-millionaire now because and i truly believe it's because he had a great woman by his side he was doing it he was trying to do his thing but he can only do so much but when she came gave him like the simplest little pointers the simplest little things and he he took he took the advice from her and he's like i i love this one you know she really she brought she's seen something in me that i couldn't even see and she it's like little tweaks and it's just like having that 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 feminine energy by your side when you guys are working together in complete harmony it's it, the possibilities are endless the possibilities are endless so it's like that's the type of relationship that i want i i believe that's what a, a uh, the type of relationship a lot of women today want and so it's really possible it's it's more than possible all all we have to do is you know cultivate that in, the energies inside of us that we already have feminine energy that you have ladies that's a superpower and to the right man it's the right masculine man you guys are going to be unstoppable if you come together you know and it's inevitable all you have to do is just really embrace that and also like we said in the prior uh earlier part make sure that you're making room yeah there are things that women bring to beautify a man's life for instance as a as a single man you're probably sitting on a couch that you got from your parents in 1992 right in front of like the rappers and like drake going like this <laughs> and like you got, a bunch of, you got a bunch of posters on your wall there's probably like you, your kitchen's probably got grease all over it like you, your your camera's probably too low it probably needs to be up like three feet and like your lighting's messed up and like these are things a woman can really bring to a man's life it's so you know true. she'll show them how can we spread the posters out and maybe put them in a frame and maybe paint the wall it's so true 
It is so I'm just messing with you. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, but it's but it's so true though. Like you really don't know what a woman can bring to uh I, I wanna say it was like it was a quite a few years back, but I lived with this woman and the next I want to say the next week or so my house looked entirely different in a good way though she it's it's like women know how to make a house feel like a home you know they, they know how to spruce things up add that woman's touch it's funny that you mentioned about the posters that had this one woman she wasn't even my girlfriend or anything but I when I first moved here I just I, I did like a walkthrough of all the art and stuff I have around and one of the first things she said was uh uh, you need some ladies in there. You don't have any ladies on the wall. There's too much masculine energy in there. And <laughs> but but I actually do have, I have a uh, like I call her the Queen of Africa in my hallway, and then I have another uh, lady in my room. And and she's seeing it. She's like, oh, so not, that's perfect. It's a, it's a nice balance. And you know, but <laughs> had she not mentioned that to me, I probably would have had like even more rappers and stuff like that <laughs> but it gives it it gave it a nice balance of everything and so it's just it's what a woman brings it's it's you really can't quantify it into money or or anything like that it's it's just it's very it's a divine experience to be able to have a woman by your side that can really enhance your life and ladies you don't understand like that's that's a powerful thing that you really have a lot to bring to a man and it, like i said it's not going to be it might not be a monetary these these things are something that a man can't bring himself you know these, it, it's it's more of divine it's more of a spiritual thing it's more of like an essence thing and so really need to understand that you guys that feminine energy is a superpower Dude, I think one of the biggest, I think one of the biggest mistakes that we've made as a culture is is trying to like calculate the economic output of a female, yeah, uh, of a woman. Like, how asinine is that? That's like trying to calculate like the the return on investment for your kid, right? Like, we're, we're like cramming these like spiritual, beautiful, wonderful things into the into the lens of like the gross national product or like the, the you know the GDP. It's it's just one is not meant to measure the other and so if we start if we start measuring women in in terms of especially in relationship in terms of their ability to deliver economically like are you paying 50 percent of the bills go fuck off is that no cool? don't pay 50 the bills let's stop measuring it that way however right now i get that that's what it's about because women are showing up so masculine so penetrative that you're like all right you're pretty much acting like a dude so why don't you throw down like a dude too why don't you why don't you pay the bills they have the bills <laughs> however again we're just missing this like we're missing this symbiotic like 100 percent plus 100 percent equals 300 percent kind yes. of math yeah. where you just have two people who are completely able to to create a system that aligns with their vision and is able to manifest more anyway hey i agree though one thing that women have to realize when you're trying to cultivate your femininity make sure that you're in tune with your emotions you know make sure that you're able to practice mind mindfulness and be inside of your body because that's what that's what feminine essence is that emotion being able to cultivate that emotional information inside of you when you're so focused on doing just doing and 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 just you know go being goal oriented and so ambitious sometimes you might forget to be inside your own body and to feel your emotions that's what women are are, are great at is feeling your emotions where you know what why are you feeling this way how are you feeling what how do you feel when this happens what what's what's what are you feeling when you're doing this uh, or how are you feeling in this type of situation really make sure that you're able to stay in that because that's that's really what where a woman's strength is coming from is that emotion being able to be there not not being so into the penetrative and I, I don't need to feel I need to do I need to do like that's a that's what men do you know women have to make sure I mean I, I know that sometimes you have to be outside of your feminine energy when you're in you know these these dominating type of roles absolutely I get that but never forget that that's where your power is is in the emotion it's in that being able to be inside of your body and to to really cultivate that yeah
you know, I realized how, how many women like my content and it's because I don't talk about the, I don't talk about the, the other side of what they have to give up to be in equity with protection and provision to, I don't talk about how women have to submit to leadership. Mm. And that's the other, half of this, that's the other half of this things. And as soon as I start talking about it, I'm, sh I'm sure I'll get some hate, but I'm, I could really use a little bit more hate right now because <laughs> everybody's positive about what I'm doing. Well, there's a positive because I'm not talking about like, yes, a man will show up in production and provision, but the cost of being protected and provided for is following his leadership. It's like submitting to his leadership. It's trusting him. And that, if you don't think that that's an actual cost, try doing it. Just, just try respecting your man's leadership. And, you know, for the few that will, you'll find that it's hard for the ones that will just reject it out of hand. Well, if you see that men aren't showing up in protection and provision, perhaps it's because you've rejected following his leadership before you've even considered it. Mm, man, that's a mouthful right there. <laughs> uh, I, I'm known for saying mouthfuls. <laughs> <laughs> say mouthful because um, that's, the video that I posted the other day that I told you kind of went viral on Facebook, the women that are coming on, because it's talking about the, how being an independent woman in a relationship is actually very counterintuitive. And the women that were coming on, they were a lot, not all of them, but some of them agreed, but the other ones were just so like, no, like, uh, well, I don't, I don't need to have, I don't need a father. I have a dad. Uh, I don't need leadership. What is he leading for? Blah, blah, blah. It's in, in the, they, they totally missed the whole point because they, those types of women, they wanted, they want the protection and the leadership and the, you know, the provision, not the leadership. They want the protection and the provision, but they skip out the leadership part. And it's like, it's, it, they, they're all like, oh, well, the, the guys just want to provide and all that so they can control you. And I'm like, I understand that that might have happened to you and that you might have, you might see this happen. It does happen. Absolutely. But we're talking about your when you're with a very healthy masculine man, uh, one that has you know, one that you can uh, trust his integrity and his leadership to lead you guys in the right direction, where you can actually be in your feminine and allow him to to actually be the leader in the in the relationship. So the, I seen that that was a big issue um, with women is the leadership part of it. But. Uh, I'm here to tell you ladies today if you find you you can find the right man that actually will lead you you both in the right direction he has to have he has to be connected to the divine he can't just be some guy just you know just trying to figure life out obviously he's got no destination but when you have a man that has a mission he's connected to the divine he's loving showing provision and leadership to you this is someone that you can safely submit to you but you have to make sure that you're in the right space for that and understand what comes with the whole being being provided for there's a leadership portion that does come with it in closing these are different things that you can do to become more feminine and to cultivate your femininity it's a superpower i i, I say that a lot but it really is a superpower it's not something that can be quantified into money or monetary confines it's something that goes beyond that and when you can start to realize that when you become more feminine you're going to attract more masculine men and you're going to actually be able to be in your feminine essence in that radiance you're, you're going to have a higher quality of life a much more higher quality of life and that's what i want that's what we both want for you ladies we want you to be able to have the life and the relationships that you want that's what we're here for and so i appreciate you all for watching this episode thank you daniel for being on this again and let's continue to become our best selves and let's continue to uh, just achieve the lives that we want by becoming the best that we can. <laughs> hey, stay elevated. <laughs>
find them in. Audio for the man. Audio for the man.